So the basic uh, technology and what I'm going to show you now is a uh, uh, demonstration of how we uh, in the Swedish in the no oh, sorry how we uh, uh, reach an uh, outward going steel door with multiple locking points. Uh, during the early 80s, we uh, encountered those steel doors <coughs> that uh, gave us uh, uh, really, uh, uh, really much trouble. They were uh, really hard to breach, and we weren't able to get the, through to, uh, through them. Uh, uh, we tried with different. We tried to invent different techniques and tools, and um, a lot of that stuff. But uh, we weren't able to uh, come up with anything that worked. So. We, we uh, instead, instead of trying to invent the wheel, we went straight to the source. We uh, started to look at those guys that really know how to uh, work with tools. Carpenters, demolition guys, and, uh, and uh, uh, such uh, working groups. Uh, we discovered that when they had to, uh, when they had to uh, pry open a steel door with multiple locking points, they were using wedges, wedges and sledgehammers. What that would do is to create a gap between the door blade and the door frame that is actually the width of the, uh, the wedge and the door blade. So you would have a gap that is like this. Now, they uh, explained to me that <clears throat> on, a, on a heavily reinforced steel door of good quality, the door blade itself becomes its worst enemy. The door blade is so stiff that it won't yield. So when you force in a wedge that creates that uh, a gap that is that wide, the door blade becomes like a spring feather and starts breaking itself, breaks its own locking points. If that isn't enough, we would we would breach the tool like this downwards instead of doing an ordinary pivot pull because you won't get as much power with a pivot pull like you would do with a with a uh, if you push the tool down and get that leverage into this small surface that is also the reason why we have those jagged edges on the tool uh, because of uh, because of the extremely hard steel that we have in this uh, in in this head, it takes 10 to 13 hours to carve this head out of a solid steel block. Uh, the, the this steel it cuts through any metal that is used indoors, so the, it makes the it makes the uh, wedge. <coughs> uh, um, uh, it, it, it makes the wedge uh, stuck in the uh, between the door blade and the door frame, frame and prevents it from snapping out, which was something that uh, very often happened before we before we invented this. Some other manufacturers have this design on the head. It's our design since uh, over ten years ago. What they uh, do, they market it as a some form of multi breacher. I would just I would just really really stress that this is absolutely uh, not a multi breacher if you use this tool on a wooden door it will actually weaken the door at the point where it, you would like it to be strongest so this this design and this tool is designed only for one purpose and that's as, as a heavily reinforced steel door outward opening nothing else it's not a prime bar it's a wedge on a shaft. The shaft uh, gives us the opportunity to steer the wedge where we want it to, to go. And now I'm going to show you the technique on a mock-up uh, mock door <coughs> that, um, that uh, uh, if, if it would have been a, a real uh, live situation, we would have used this tool. But if we use this tool on the mock-up door, we will destroy the, the, uh, the door. So we're going to use this tool instead. The technique is going to be the same, and as you can see, we have those jagged edges here as well. So you will see what I'm talking about there. Uh, I would just like to say a couple of words about this small ram. It kind of look uh, some breaches uh, think it looks kind of girly, but it is actually a really, really a good piece of equipment. We call it the tactical ram, and we use it uh, instead of using sledgehammer. Uh, we, we call it a sledgehammer for dummies, which police officers uh, very often are.
when it comes to using tools. Uh, this uh, this sledgehammer <coughs> uh, is uh, very tactical. It doesn't require a lot of space. You don't have to swing backwards and interfere with the team who's standing behind. And the most important thing on this one is that, again, we looked at the carpenters. <coughs> if you have a hammer, you will never see a hammer with a flat hitting surface. If you have a flat hitting surface, you will bend the nail. Same thing with, goes with uh, this ram. If you have a flat hitting surface that you have on a traditional ram, you will steer you will steer the tool in a direction that you don't want it. And also, another thing, you will, with a flat hitting surface, you will always get an unclean hit. And that creates a shock that travels through the prime bar and into your hands, and it causes nerve damages. So, <clears throat> we're now going to show you the technique <clears throat> with this tool and this, uh, and, okay. Yeah, we've got that part there. That's what I call it. Yep. Okay. 